Hello, welcome to Simon's Shed and today we are doing a review. Uh, it's a review of a brand new Formby product called the E-Link. Uh, now this is uh, product code R8312 uh, retails at 84.99 uh, and uh, it's just come out and it comes with the uh, Railmaster software and uh, what it does it allows you to control your trains via PC or uh, if you link up your handheld, your iPhone or your Android device uh, or tablet you can uh, also control trains via that too so first of all um, let's take a look what's inside the box uh, okay we have a quick start guide and a bit of paper, which is some additional instructions that they didn't put in the quick start guide. Uh, looks like it's how to identify which port your controller is on. We'll have a look at that later. Um, so instructions say uh, install the software and the e-link driver and activate the software and a little diagram of how to connect everything up so the e-link uh, is effectively your DCC controller but it has no buttons or anything on the front as it's linked via USB to the computer and all the control is done via the computer or the iPad or iPhone as I said so let's have a look And in this bag, and inside this plastic, is a very shiny Hornby E-Link. Uh, so just, I assume that's a light on the front, ports on the side, USB and power. Nothing on the back. And on the other side, track and prog. Uh, I assume track is your layout track and prog uh, is your programming track if you want a separate programming track. So that's the actual e link itself. Let's have a look at the rest of the stuff. We've got another little tray. Let's software. This is the Railmaster software. Um, CD and hopefully yeah so you can actually download the software you don't really need the CD you can just download the software off the internet but the main thing we do need is the activation key he says covering it up uh, just in case anyone wants to steal it I'm sure you wouldn't do that uh, so yeah that's the Railmaster software and just the transformer and some cables actually the USB cable so let's just see how long this cable is it looks like a standard USB cable it's not very long which is a bit disappointing but it is a standard cable so if you wanted to replace that with your own I'm sure that would be no problem if you needed a longer cable and we just got some wires uh, these are the track connector wires aren't they for the uh, from the e-link to the track okay so that's uh, everything that was in the box I think what we need to do now is connect it all up Okay, so to set up the software, you stick the CD in and right click on the setup file and run as administrator. 
uh, so that it's got permission to do all the registration and stuff. Then uh, it installs, uh, checks for an update, and it'll probably find one, so it'll have to install again. Uh, then the next time it will look for the controller. Uh, now in my case it didn't find it and I had to figure out which COM port the uh, controller was connected to, which, you know, messing with COM ports is something I haven't really done since 1993, so that was a bit of a culture shock, uh, but never mind, we got that sorted, that's fairly, fairly simple to sort out. Uh, so, yeah, installation fairly straightforward, uh, fairly much, you know, the normal sort of Windows program installation, uh, which leads me to say, uh, in the highly unlikely event that Hornby are watching, please make a Mac version. Would be very appreciated if you could make an OS X version of this, uh, and then I wouldn't have to even bother rebooting into Windows. That aside, uh, I think I'll just give you a brief tour of the software. So, starting with the little spanner icon, that's obviously your settings. So you set up your controller uh, in there, and as I say, the COM port. Uh, and there's other settings in there, like you put in which gauge, so I've put in N gauge uh, because that relates to the scale speeds that everything uh, runs at, so it tries to make everything uh, run at a speed appropriate to that to that scale. Uh, and various other settings in there. There is a nice detailed manual, so I'll just whiz through these. Uh, this is your loco setup. Um, you can see I've already got uh, a few of my loco set up there. So, to set up a new loco, you just select the DCC number assigned to it, give it a name, you can also give it a photo. Um, so, as you can see with this one, I've given it a little photo, and you can set the uh, cruising speed and shunting speed. Uh, you can do a lot more detailed things if you look down here. I think it's this one where you can actually program all of the uh, they're called CV settings, so you can do quite detailed programming. But as I say, just a brief look. This is uh, programming. I'll give you a quick demo of that later. You can do time-based programming. Uh, so you say you, you select a loco, and you say at this time it wants to do this. At this point, it needs to stop, and so on. As I say, I'll give you a demo in a little while. Uh, track plans, so we've got the sample track plan here to give you an idea of what you can do but if you click on this one you can create your own and you can just stick elements on uh, obviously that doesn't fit together but you get the idea track elements and you can do things like signals and points and even turntables so that's the track editor, so you can do a representation of your layout um, and control signals and stuff via that. Uh, this is just a little thing that says read the manual, which I do advise. You can do double heading, so you select the locos for, for double heading or triple heading or whatever. Uh, this allows you to record steps, so you press this button and you do whatever you want to do on the control, start the train, stop the train, set the points and it will record that and make a program for you uh, which will appear in here and then you can edit that program and run it uh, tweak it so you can sort of record what you're doing and, and sort of play it back this, I can't remember, oh yeah this is the so if you have lots of locos you get a grid there so you can easily select your loco this, I'm not sure, accessory, so you can program the accessory decoder from there, but uh, I think it own. no, it doesn't only apply to Hornby ones, there's, there's a few of the common ones, Lens and Gauge Master and so on, in there, and that's just the exit button, uh, so here's your track plan, where you control your points and so on, just by clicking them, and your signals, and here's your locos, your throttle, your uh, DCC function buttons. Uh, you can go straight to shunting speed, straight to cruising speed, or stop. Uh, obviously, change direction. And yeah, you can also get so you can control quite a few locos at once. Um, 
depending on your screen size. You can also get a nice big view of this so you can get a easier to control throttle. Um, so yeah, set up fairly straightforward apart from the COM port issue. So that's a brief introduction to the software. Uh, I think next we'll have a set up my track plan and give you a proper demo. Okay, it's demo time. So I've got the E-Link set up over there. All plugged in, I've set up my points, DCC points, and then my track plan, and set up a few locos. So it should, s I've set it to put all my points into a default position when it loads up. So you should hear that in a minute. There we go. So we've got the locos down here. You can get a bigger control box for a loco by just clicking on it. DCC functions are down here. So let's turn the lights on on the class 24. Um, I've not. Uh, the scale speeds don't seem to be working at the moment. Everything seems to be too fast. So a tiny bit of throttle. Uh, sends the loco off quite quickly, so I need to tweak that. But uh, the loco control works well, and I'll show you the point control is really easy. So, if you want to send the class 24 down the siding to collect the trucks, we just throw the points by tapping on the, the mouse pointer on the point, and that changes the point. and you can now go down the siding. A little bit tricky to shunt at the moment because everything's just running too fast as I say. But yeah, I definitely like the way the points are controlled. Got your little track plan laid out there. So let's set that so they can go around the loop <laughs> and you can control the locos from here as well so let's get the Deltic going I think the passengers have got on now get them going nice and fast so that's the basic control Okay, so another feature of this is you can actually link it up to uh, Apple and uh, Android devices as well as some older PDAs and tablets as well. Which sounds like a pretty cool feature, so I'll give you a quick demo of that. Okay, so on the Android and iPhones you just get this one controller view and you can then switch to a view which is just showing the track plan uh, but on the tablet obviously you get more screen space so you can control a couple of locos and you can see the screen plan as well uh, or you can see an enlarged screen plan that way although the way I've designed it it doesn't really enlarge because it it's, doesn't go down that way but never mind I've got to say I'm a little bit disappointed with this um, you would expect, you know, it's an, on iPhone uh, and Android devices, you expect to sort of uh, slide and drag things around. And you, you, can, you can pinch to zoom into the track plan. But you can't, which is a big disappointment, slide to control the throttle. Which uh, is what you really want to do. So what you actually have to do is tap and just keep tapping. As far as the track plan goes, it's a little bit hit and miss. They seem to want you to tap the little buttons there, whereas I would expect if I tap anywhere on the point, why not just change the point if I tap anywhere on it? 
so it's a little bit fiddly when you zoomed out and you've got the same buttons as on the laptop so you can immediately go to cruising speed or shunting speed or stop and the same function buttons for the lights or whatever DCC functions you got uh, so that's an extra $9.99 you have to buy a license for this, this is just the evaluation version uh, and then if you want to use it on another phone or tablet you have to pay another $4.99 on top of that but I mean it works, all I had to do was put in the IP address of my laptop there uh, and it found the it found the Railmaster software running, so could be better. Could definitely be improved. Yeah, that's the uh, tablet and phone software. Okay, I'll quickly just show you the programming feature. Uh, the easiest way to get started with that is to click the record button here, and then anything you do with the controller after that point um, will actually start recording a program so I've had a quick go at that and, and uh, set up a few things so what I did this is to edit the program is just sent the deltic round and I'm going to try and get it to stop at the station again and I'm just going to bring the class 24 uh, so the deltic's going to go around and stop at the station again and the class 24 is going to come out of the siding just a quick program to tell you so this is literally just what it's recorded of me I've tweaked a couple of the time settings you you do it for a number of seconds so start him going at that point in time and then uh, stop after 37 seconds so obviously any variation you know any dirty track that holds it up for a second is going to affect the program but it's fun to play around with so uh, let's give it a try uh, to run it you just choose it from the list and press go so all I'm going to press is that one button there which says go and we'll see what happens Definitely need to tweak the speed settings on that class 24 because that's supposed to be shunting speed. So there, the point changed on its own. And in theory, you should now stop at the station. Just overshot a little bit, but there you get the idea. So that's programming. Okay, so in conclusion then, uh, let's start with the E-Link itself. Extra points for being very shiny. Uh, it's, you know, fairly compact and discreet. You can hide that away under the layout. That's fine. Uh, not much else to say about that really, as uh, everything is actually controlled by, by the computer. So, which is running the Railmaster software, so let's talk about that. Uh, it's fine, it works. Um, I need to tweak the settings. It's a little bit quirky, uh, there are a few glitches, but you know, that can be improved by software upgrade. So, you get it, every time it starts up, it checks for an upgrade. So, uh, hopefully, little glitches like I had with the, the picture I put in not showing up and some strange oddities on the on the track plan that now seem to have sorted themselves out uh, are fixed uh, so yeah happy with the the PC control side of things you can imagine it working really well on a big touch screen tapping the points uh, loco controls fine I think I need to just adjust a few settings to uh, oops, to make um, make it a bit more sensitive uh, or a bit less sensitive rather because my loco is going a bit too fast at the moment with not very much movement on the throttle so yeah the iPad and iPhone connection is 
a bit of a nice bonus for now. I'm not entirely convinced. I really wish the throttle would... Uh, uh, you could use the throttle by sliding up and down rather than tapping. Um, I really wish they'd have done a native iPhone app and iPad app as well. That would have been a lot slicker and a lot more like the other apps that you're used to if you've got one of those devices. It's all just a bit clunky. Cool. Uh, positives overall happy with it it's uh you know for the retail prices i think it's 84.99 for that sort of price you've got uh, a computer controlled system that can control all of your dcc points and locos and accessories signals and stuff uh which you can't really beat for the price and uh, lots of things that can be improved as i say hopefully software upgrades will uh, bring some of those along and hopefully the iPhone and iPad and Android apps will get better because they have only recently been released. Uh, the programming is quite fun, um, although you do have to be sort of careful how, because you know, lots of things can affect the time it takes a loco to, to get around the track. So, uh, but yeah, fun fun playing with that. So there, there it is, the Hornby E-Link. I think given the price I'd have to uh, recommend it, but obviously the uh, best thing to do is give it a try yourself. First of all, there is a an evaluation version of the software, so you can have a play around with the, the software first of all. Uh, so I recommend you do that and uh, check it out. So yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.